Talking TSM, the Game House's talk show about TSM's LCS team. My name is Robert Haynes, and I am your host and your guide into the world of everything to do with the TSM LCS team. And wow, we have had a lot of information come out. We've had some roster confirmations. I expect more to come soon. We have a lot of interesting things coming up. Um, actually, you're going to see me reaching over here because I actually forgot about something I wanted to look up. Um, so ap apologies on that one real quick. But, you know, um, while I'm while I'm getting to this here, you know, it was it was a weird week, right? Like, you know, I came out with the Bjergsen episode, which has been doing fairly well honestly uh, a little surprised with how well it did um apologies by the way as well our youtube channel got taken down for a copyright claim because of some sports stuff for a little bit and it was like your channel is deleted and we were like oh crap so i did put my put the last episode on my personal channel um but you don't need to worry about that now um it's not going to stay there so uh, I mean, it, it'll be, it'll stay there, but like, I'm not going to put any more episodes up there unless if I have to. So, um, you know, apologies for that, but you know, uh, I think things happen. So, um, and, and I, I had a little bit of a rough weekend with some sickness and some family stuff. So, um, I do, uh, apologize that, uh, you know, maybe I didn't do as much for this episode as I would have liked, but, um, you know, finally kind of getting back on the train a little bit today. So I, I hope you know, hope, hope that what we talk about isn't too repetitive uh, because, you know, listen, guys, until the roster and everything really comes to fruition, a lot of this is going to be talking about rumors. It's going to be talking about leaks. It's going to be talking about the roster a lot. Um, and, you know, with Bjergsen leaving, spoiler alert, in case if somehow you didn't know where you weren't watching uh, Thursday's episode, you know, I, I was... So Told, and I've thought I've thought on this a lot during the last while, last couple days since the news came out on Thursday. That you know, I mean, I I, I get it from Bjergsen's perspective. It's just, it sucks, man. I mean, it really does. I mean, I. I had been told by multiple people that he was staying, that TSM had had outbid everybody, that there was so much money being thrown his way, and there was. And, and so, you know, I think that's going to get us into, into segment one here. Well, no, sorry, it's not. I forgot. I got to talk about Worlds for a second. So quickly, we're going we're gonna to table this thing on Bjergsen. We're going to jump into the Worlds discussion really quickly here. So, this weekend, we had the two final semifinal games. Uh, T1 versus Damwon on Saturday, and then Edward Gaming EDG versus Genji. Um, and so, there were, by the way, three LCK teams left and one LPL. So, three Korean teams and one Chinese team. And uh, I really thought T1 was going to win. They were up, I believe, 2-1. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I watched most of those games. Uh, Saturday was a little, a little weird uh, for me, but um, you know, I, I watched most of those games, and it just it looked like T one had the momentum. They had seemingly figured out Dam one, and then just Showmaker Canyon. They really stepped up in a big, big, big way. I think. Um, I think they they played well. Uh, obviously, I mean they are they they are the the arguably the best team in the world right now. I mean they're they're at least top two again, <laughs> and uh, they might be creating the new dynasty. Truly, um, not not might be even they probably are. This is this 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 damn one Kia team is pretty outstanding. Um, you know, despite all the hype everybody had about the LPL. I really thought Mad Lions were going to perform better. I think the LCS outside of the quarterfinals um, and week one actually performed pretty well. And so, 
you know, watching Dan Juan come back uh, was a treat. They're they're a great team. Uh, if you like to watch just really, really good League of Legends, uh, they play that on a consistent basis. So um, it was it was very entertaining to watch. Um, I think T1 just ended up sadly just getting outclassed at the end. Um, which is rough because I don't know that we'll ever see Faker get this far again. And that's why I really wanted him to go. I really wish that it would have been T1 and Damwon in the finals. I think I think that was possible and I think it would have been one of the greatest series we've ever seen. And that and that Saturday series was one of the greatest series we've ever seen by the way. I mean it was uh, from what I was actually able to watch of it, it was so much fun. The players just played their butts off and it was I don't know. It was it was a great series. I, I wish I had been it had been on a, a better weekend for me personally, but um, it was just super fun to watch. Then the Sunday game, you know, watching EDG make their comeback as well. I didn't get to see the full game of it. I I, I I'll be honest with you. I was again distracted Sunday, and then I was watching football, um, so I, I really didn't get to watch as much of the series as I would have liked. Um, But, you know, I think EDG are are, going to come ready to play. Uh, Because in case if you can't tell from this, it's going to be Damwon versus Edward Gaming uh, for the finals on Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 a.m. Pacific. Um, Sorry for those of you in the Pacific Standard Time. (laughs) Um, I I will be up early on Sunday, uh, ready to roll. I will be watching that. Um, that full thing, and then heading straight into football right afterwards. So uh, it's going to be an action-packed Sunday. But, yeah, guys, like, listen, this this will be a very interesting series to me because I doubted EDG and Genji, who they just played, pretty much the entire time. Like, I really thought Genji were the worst LCK team, uh, I still think they were at best third. <laughs> I think T1 were better than them. Um, and EDG, I just kept, you know, I watched them them win the LPL summer, um, you know, summer finals. And I was like, yeah, like that was a pretty good series. You know, I think they might have caught FPX on a bad day. Um, I think FPX was uh, caught in a bad couple of months, it would seem. And apparently now... Um, everything is kind of imploding with that team from the sounds of it. It sounds like FPX will be not FPX anymore, which is a huge disappointment to say the least, because I, I've really enjoyed that team. But, you know, now we have, you know, EDG, they've made their way up. Scout and Viper, uh, I think are clearly the players to watch for on that team. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not they're actually going to be able to do anything against this Damwon team because guys I'll, I'll be honest with you Damwon by the way my I guess I'll do my prediction really quickly Damwon 3-1 is when I am anticipating Saturday's matchup will be um, and so I wish it could be a lot closer there's a chance that it is if Viper is able to really just take over games. But I'm just not convinced that that is going to happen. I just I just don't I don't don't see it happening. I I think you know, I I I just think Flandre is kind of a bit of a weak spot for this team. Um and JJ has really good games and kind of troll games. And so when it comes down to it, I I just think that Damwon are going to be able to, I don't know, kind of bully their way to wins. I think Khan um, will will be the better top laner uh, at the end of the day. I think Canyon will be able to to out-jungle JJ in most spots. I think Showmaker is better than Scout. Not by a lot, not by like a, any significant amount, but uh, but but he's definitely better than him. Um, 
And then, you know, I think Ghost and Barrel have actually had a much better Worlds than they did last year when they won. And so, you know, it sucks for... I, I feel terrible, by the way, for Damwon because they're having, like, this this incredible run uh, in the middle of COVID. You know, like, think about that, right? There's just, like, you know, all this great stuff going on for them. And they don't get, they don't have fans to watch it. You know, they don't have a big crowd to cheer them on the whole time. And so, uh, you know, the, it's super sad. The crazy thing is, I'm almost certain that this team is probably going to try to resign because uh, I'm looking at right now. They're technically they on November fifteenth. They will mostly become free agents. I think Ghosts for some reason it looks like is a free agent six days later. I don't know. Whatever. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, what if their run ends, what if their run ends and they really never got to play in front of a lot of fans, like a big blown out fan base. Now I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to have people, you know, come into Iceland. I, it doesn't seem like that's the case. I think next year we will probably have fans back, in, you know, in the LCS, LPL everywhere. Uh, I would think with restrictions, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's sad. It's sad to see such a, such an unbelievable team that will not get to have the fan base in front of them. And so, uh, I hope, I really kind of hope that they go out and, and they, and they crush EDG. Um, just because I, I want to see another dynasty, man. I think Showmaker deserves it. Uh, I think Canyon deserves it. I think they get to go down. I think they deserve to go down in history as one of the best teams, um, of all time if not the best team of all time. I don't know if they would have beat Team 1 back when Faker was really tearing it up, but regardless, that's the World's 2021 update. I've gone on long enough about it. We're here to talk about TSM. So let's head into segment two here. Now, we've talked about this at length with Bjergsen, with... Um, you know, what this team, what, you know, what, what is important to him? And from the sounds of it, he left because, again, he, he wanted to play with one player. They weren't able to get that player. Apparently, they were willing to spend buku bucks to buy out this specific player. And we're going to know based on the team he goes to, right, and who is on that team still. Uh, I am still fully convinced that he is going to, t- to Team Liquid. And that he will be, uh, you know, with Steve. Um, and, you know, I think Steve is Steve is one of my favorite owners in the LCS, to be honest with you. Um, I really think that he is very intelligent and um, understands a lot of not only the business, but just the way things are going to move forward. I think he's got a very good vision. Um, and I think people generally love playing for him. I think he's very honest. I think he's generally genuine. Um, and when I think about not only an owner that Bjergsen, you know, would want to play for besides himself slash Reggie, um, you know, I think of Steve, I could see Jack too, just because again, Jack has the TSM connections as well. I think a lot of us sometimes forget that (laughs) to be honest with you, but you know, it, it seems like that's where he's going. And so the question then becomes what is next for TSM? And so, you know, I am, Oh no, something got messed up. That's unfortunate. Um, all right, you guys are going to have to give me two seconds here because something got messed up on my screen. Sorry guys. This is, this is me like trying to just kind of figure things out on the fly. Okay, so uh, bear with me here, um, because like I said, I don't I don't have a production crew or anything with me, so um, I do apologize for that. But uh, but yeah, so Reggie, I got it fixed. Kind of, it's gonna look a little janky, but it's there. So you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? <laughs> uh, this is driving me nuts. All right, that's 
fine for now. Um, so Reggie went on and did an AMA on the TSM Reddit, uh, subreddit. And, you know, I think that was, a, first off, super, super smart move by him to do this. And I'm impressed that they decided to do this because what better way to get in front of your fans and to talk to them than to do a Reddit AMA? I mean, seriously, it's almost become like the tried and true method in esports of not only how to, to talk to your fans, but to, to get out information. And there was some really, really important information that got out there, and that was that Hooney and Spica are for sure on the team next year. And that is, I think, big news for us. I, I, I think a lot of us were like, oh, my God, if they lose Spica, we're going to be pretty sad, like really sad. I mean, you lose Bjergsen. Yeah, that's freaking huge, right? But we, we I want to remind everybody, we didn't have Bjergsen as a player last year, okay? Bjergsen was a coach last year. So all those people who are like, you know, losing their minds and freaking out, oh, they didn't get Bjergsen. They didn't have Bjergsen anyways last year, guys. Yes, I'm going to be sad that he's not a part of the org and that he will likely be playing against us six times plus a year, all right? I, I, I am going to be upset about that just as much as you are you all are but let's not forget he wasn't on the team he was not a part of the 2021 starting lineup okay so with that in mind right we have to look at it like all right so you know what where do we go from here we now know that we have top lane and Spica, <laughs> Huni and Spica, top lane and jungle are, are, are ready to go, right? And so um, I want to talk about these potential options that are going to be coming up for us. And, you know, we did the, the possible roster stuff, um, you know, what was it like four weeks ago now? October 11th was the last time I did this. So about a month ago, um, we, we talked about, you know, what the roster could look like. And, you know, most of us had Bjergsen in the lineup. I did not. I had um, I had him only in about half of my lineups, to be honest with you. And so I think it's time that we seriously talk about what is the identity of this team. What are we going to do? And... You know, with Huni and Spica staying, I think that's a smart move. I really do. While I was all on board for the rumors about Tenacity and Kenvi, you know, they're going for this developmental roster is what they said, right? Um, they are going to be going for a team that is is younger, and but not completely young. And so that makes me wonder, you know, what do they consider to be young, what do they consider to be, you know, that that core team uh, that they could build 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 upon? And I'll be honest with you, this is this is gonna be tough, guys. This is like I'm gonna switch over to my face real quickly. This is going to be a very tough roster to put together to not only be young and developmental like they said but to also find success and be able to play against whatever the super team that tl is probably putting together um and with the latest rumors that alfari and perks are going back to europe that's only going to really help the lcs because truly that means that most likely huni's going to end up being the second best top laner in the lcs with spica being arguably the best jungler so you have two and two very good pieces on this team already, right? And 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 you really need to figure out, you know, you because you can't you can't go full developmental roster, right? You just can't. You can't just go super young. As much as I would really, really, really like to go young roster, you know, build up the superstars of TSM's tomorrow. Um, I think if you go full rookie beside them, 
you know, besides those two, unless if they lock them up now, there's a chance that they get a long term deal done with Spica and they, they add an extra year onto Hooney's contract because so this is why I was bringing up I wanted to bring up the contract database because we need to look at when their contracts are up. So Hooney is and and Spica are both signed through next year. Okay, they are signed through 2022 November. I wouldn't be surprised to see them announce in the next couple weeks that Spica is going to sign a three-year extension or something like that. Now, the only reason I say that is I, I, the, the, the hesitation I have with that is whether or not he, he would actually accept it, right? Would Spica actually accept a contract extension? We've, we've known that he's wanted to potentially go to the LPL. I'm assuming he's pretty upset that this team doesn't have Bjergsen. Right and and if I'm TSM right now, I am cons- constantly talking to Spica, and I think one of the reasons why Huni's staying is because I think him and Spica are very close friends. At this point, I think they they seem like they really meshed well together. Their personalities, I think, really flow well together. And regardless of how old Huni is, I think they might just keep him on this roster maybe even a little over when they should based off of, you know, based off, based off of what speaker wants. And so I can almost guarantee you that if their plan is truly to still keep speaker right on this roster and, and from what it sounds like, you know, you know, Reggie said, you know, they're staying, we're not looking to sell them. We're not looking to let them get bought out or anything like that. We're not looking to trade them. Right. So if that is the case, then I'm assuming they're going to him and they are going to throw every single thing they can at him. He is their next Bjergsen. We talked about this last year before the rumors of Bjergsen coming back. I just fully assumed that Spica will be and will continue to be the face of TSM. And I think that's their plan too. I wouldn't even be surprised to see them offer him ownership stakes in the company to try to get him to sign a long-term deal whether again he will accept it or not is going to be interesting now it may not come out right away they may even do it during the middle of the next year he may still be very upset about everything that is going on with Bjergsen and we're going to talk about the front office here in the in the in the last segment of today so again we know Huni Spica they're both locked up uh, real quickly, just so you know, the other interesting parts are everybody else. So we know that Power of Evil's gone, right? Although his contract was technically until next year. The one-year wonder continues to move to team to team to team. I feel bad for him because he's really not a bad player. I think he's pretty strong m- most of the time. But, you know, it's just he's gone. Um, Lost is actually... <laughs> As much as you, as much as you guys are gonna love this, Lost is actually signed to the team through 2023, and I'm really wondering whether or not he's gonna get another chance on this roster. And I'll explain why here in a little bit, but we know that Sword Art is gone. I should give him a quick second here. You know, thank you to Sword Art. Seriously, you were put with an impossible task of living up to an amount of money that many thought was never going to be worth it that is not your fault i think you played admirably with a roster that i think at times was below you as bad as that sounds for the rest of them um i think it took them a really long time to understand the the uh, a better style to play i'm sure he probably felt like he was being held back um especially in lane uh, you know, uh, loss, I think, got better as the season went on, but clearly they, they did not really mesh as well as we would have liked for them to. Um, you know, I think they really liked each other and everything, but it was clear that they didn't have that synergy, and synergy is important, probably another reason why Huni is staying. But then you look below, right? Hyper is signed through 2023. Takeover, 2023, and your son is still here 2023 on all their signings 
I'm very conflicted on what they're going to do with these players because they clearly they got rid of everybody else right everybody else is gone but they clearly kept these players and i think if they're planning on going developmental there are two names that we have not seen that are looking for team or are leaving yet those names are k's in terms of the coaching staff and our friend peter jay i truly think they're going to give this team over to peter by the way, I think that would be not only super smart, I think he's a, a great coach. I think he's a good person. Uh, I think he's a hard worker. And he's had time with Spica. And if they bring up any of these younger players, or if they maybe sign somebody like Tactical, then he'd have, ex- you know, he'd have coaching experience with those players. So we'll have to see on that part of it, on the coaching staff. But, um, yeah, what is next for TSM? Bjergsen's gone. Speak on who near here. Who are they going to get next? And I think we have to start with... I think think we have to start with who's the non-import slot. Right? Who does not... Who is not internationally... Um you know, uh, who, who's not going to be, you know, coming from the international scene. <laughs> this is, this is a tough one because none, I, I think maybe hyper, I don't even know if that none of the LCS pl- or none of the Academy players for TSM are, uh, are, are, are residents that they have right now. Takeover is technically either, I think he's Korean, but um, played started his career in Chile and then made his way up. I don't think he's good enough to take over the mid lane for TSM, by the way. I just just keep Power of Evil at that point, honestly. Um, I just don't think he could take over for Power of Evil. Yurison is interesting, but again, why not keep Sword Art if you're going to put Yurison in? You know? Because uh, he's going to take up an international slot, um, he still is probably going to have some problems with with the communication to a certain degree. Uh, I don't think he's as well versed um, in English as Sword Art was, so I just feel like I, I would not be surprised to see him actually off the team at some point here soon, unless they really feel like they can develop him later. Uh, and then Hyper is obviously not going to be taking over for Spica, so. I would say their TSM Academy is out. Now, TSM Amateur had a player named Don Bray, who I think might be at scouting grounds this year. Um, if he is, I'm going to definitely try to get an interview with him. Uh, they announced the scouting grounds players recently, um, and that'll be starting here next week, I want to say. Um, so we'll have coverage of that, by the way, at the game house the whole time. I'll have mock drafts, everything. Um it might not be till a little bit later. I don't know. I got to I gotta check on that one. Sorry, guys. But, um, you know, w- now that, that Huni and Speaker are both NA, right, we really got to look at, look at what would be the best position for them to find a new player with. And I think it starts at support. And there's a lot of different options... I think it's support. And if they're going with a developmental roster, then that makes me think, or a more developmental roster, younger roster, that makes me think that they're going to be trying to use some younger players. Now, the support market, by the way, is extremely limited, especially when you're looking at, you know, players from NA or who can count as, as, an, as an LCS player, essentially, you know, an NA player. NA or Oceania, basically. That's it. And there are not a lot of options. Um, the options are Poom, Chime, Biofrost, Donbre, and Vulcan. That's pretty much it. And technically Core JJ too, but he's he's not going anywhere. I think Core JJ is gonna be getting his green card from the sounds of it. 
So, when I'm looking at support specifically, I, there, there is one player who I think could potentially sneak his way onto this roster based on him being from Oceania. And I believe that Destiny could be somebody who TSM try to buy out. Especially if IMT are, you know, potentially at least blowing up their bot lane. So, you know, it's... um. It's it's really it's it's a really tough decision here. If you asked me, and this would probably be in order of at least the NA supports that I would like to see. I'd really like Chime, then Poom, and then Don Bray. I think Chime is really good. I thought he was great at scouting grounds last year. I really thought he deserved a starting spot, and he started to show it. With Golden Guardians. That if you're going with the young roster. If you're going with the young guys. I think that's the way you go. Right now. Um, and and you already had Don Bray in your system. I think he's technically a free agent right now. But I'm sure he would re-sign with this team. If he had a chance to you know play at the top level. I don't know that he's ready yet. To be completely honest with you. I really wish that they would announce that your son's gone. And that Don Bray's in. It's nothing against your son. It's just that. Having a good, young support that's NA takes a lot of pressure off of you when you're trying to build your roster. Similarly to top lane, right? Like right now, the, the three big skill positions, uh, if you were calling it, you know, like that for, for basketball, right? Since they're, they're, they're you know, teams of five, um, are your jungle, mid, and AD carry. And if you were to get an NA slash Oceania support. Think about the possibilities. There are rumors that they are looking at Humanoid, that they are looking at Karzy. Can you imagine a roster of Huni, Spica, Humanoid, Karzy, and one of those supports that I talked about? Any of those three? That'd be a pretty good team. That could be a team that could match whatever that super team is, right? You have a former MVP, one of the best top laners in the league currently until we figure out who TL signs. And a mid bot that were arguably the best in the LEC last year. That'd be a pretty cool team. Imagine you get that with Vulcan maybe too, right? If you were able to get Vulcan instead, that could be interesting. That could be a really cool team. And, you know, there there is also this rumor that C9 might be blowing it up too. I think that really depends on if, like, they get, you know, it, I, I think that depends on if they get Bjergsen or not. I'm still very certain that Bjergsen's going to TL because I don't think he's going to go to C9 to play with Blabber. Or play with Vulcan or play with Sven. Um, I just don't know that that would be his one person that he really wanted. And I'm sure that if TSM tried to buy out almost any of those players outside of maybe Fudge or Blabber, that they could have gotten them. So I I think Vulcan is going to potentially be available. And if I'm TSM, I am snapping him up tomorrow. I mean, literally the, 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 the second that he says, yeah, I'm good. Let's go to TSM. You know, I'm, I'm mad at C9 for screwing me over, right? Because then you have three great players, and then your your imports can be whoever you can get. Who are the two best players that you think are going to fit the style of this team, right? Who are going to, you know, just light it up. Those would be interesting. Now, I will say again, those those are really the only four options, by the way, because I don't see Bio Daddy coming back as much as I love him. I know he wants to make a comeback. I don't see it happening. I think it's Sword Art, Chime, Poom, and Don Bray. I think those are your four options. Now, I don't know that they're going to go Don Bray, so it's probably more Vulcan, Chime, and Poom. And if they're saying developmental roster, 
I'd have to think Poom might end up being that guy. I'm just going to let you guys know now. He's about Spika's age. He's been on TSM Academy for a while now. Um, he is a strong prospect in most minds. So it would not surprise me to see him make his way up next year anyways on some team somewhere. Why not DSM? So that's my pick right now is I think it's going to end up being Poom. I think I think we'll have TSM Poom next year. Um, if they weren't to go that route, I think Baolan and Ming and Beryl and Kellen are all available. I think Daption uh, from the LEC is also a potential option. Um, these ones you guys already know about. I, I went over them, you know, in my or when we were doing our roster stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that they are more likely to go, you know, NA slash OS um, support. So that then they can look at all the different mid and AD carry options. Now with Bjergsen gone and with Power People gone, here are the players that will be available, theoretically. Knight, Arya, Chovy, technically Showmaker, doubt that's going to happen. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sajak, RKR, I think it's Wrecker is how they call uh, his name. Um, Surtis, Dejour, Jizuke, um, Always plan ahead. Jojo Pion, take over, and sword. Now, there is one player on this list who could allow you to go for a full international bot lane, in my mind. And that player is Jojo Pion. Now, if they're going developmental and they want to get a guy who shot up through the rankings last year, right? Who really, really came into their own. And who is. Arguably the top prospect in LCS League of Legends currently, then that man is Jojo Pion. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, Sajak might be the only person in the LEC who I see being, at least in mid lane, better or at not even better maybe, but at least comparable to Jojo Pion. And that's saying a lot about how good JoJo can be. Everybody's hyping him up. I think I think EG are going to make a huge play for one of those top options. I think they're going after Chovy again. I think they established that they wanted him last year. Obviously, Hamon Life didn't get it done. I think they're going to say, hey, come on over here. We've got a, the rest of the roster pretty much ready to roll. They keep Danny. And then, you know, he's available. And yay for the rest of us, right? Um, but I just don't know. I just don't know that they're going to take that risk or that EG would sell to TSM with it. I just don't know. I think C9 might end up getting JoJo P on too. If Perks is actually gone, you think C9's not going to get in a bidding war? And it's going to depend on if EG can get a better mid laner or one that they feel is more currently ready. Because, guys, there's just a lot of pieces to fall. I mean, the first domino has got to be Bjergsen. Once Bjergsen falls to TL or wherever he's going, right, then the next domino to fall is going to be who are TSM, Evil Geniuses, and Team or NC9, if Perks is leaving, who are they all going to be grabbing? I think if EG can get somebody big, you know, really big from the outside, then I don't see why they couldn't get, you know, why they wouldn't trade Jojo Pune. Because I'm sure it would help them. I'm sure he would cost a hefty sum. I would venture around the number of 500000 for a buyout, at least. Because everybody's hyping him up, Right. Um, and if that's the case, while he may not cost as much initially, you know, that, uh, or it might not cost as much for his, the rest of his contract, which I believe is also 2023. Let me check on that real quick. Uh, where are you at? Evil geniuses. Jojo Pion is also, yeah, under a 2023 contract. So that's going to make him even more valuable. So I'm sure EG could probably ask for a million 
because then you get two years of Judge Apion before you have to give him a new contract. Um, and that would pay for whoever they'd want to go get, theoretically. And, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing that they're going to spend money. I don't know who they're going to spend money on, but they're going to spend money. So, if Jojo Pian's available, then I think that TSM might be a strong suitor for him. But, there's a name I keep coming back to. And there's a name that's available this offseason. And there's a name that's been to Worlds two times. They didn't perform as well this year as I would have liked. And I know a lot of you are going to probably be upset with me on this one. But they want to go young. They want to go relatively developmental. But they don't want to go full-on rookies. I think they go for Arya. I think Arya would make a lot of sense with the way that this roster is currently moving. He's South Korean but played in Japan. He's going to be probably one of the top options uh, for most LCK teams and LPL teams that are trying to make a move up. Uh, I think he is a secretly great player that I think a lot of TSM fans would come to love. Uh, and I think a lot of money for a guy who got passed over initially by a lot of LCK and LPL teams after helping Japan make their first ever group stage, right? And being a major part of that roster uh, for Detonation Focus Me, I can see him signing with an LCS team. And I think TSM are already on the board looking at him. And it would not surprise me to see you know, with Bjergsen gone, uh, especially if some of these other options have already, you know, signed with other places, um, Arya would not surprise me. I don't know that Jojo Pion is going to be available. Now, I, I could see Sajak too, um, or some of the other, you know, LEC options. You know, maybe they try to recreate the Bjergsen experience where they find some young LEC stud, right? Come up and take over the position and be the next Bjergsen. I don't think you're going to get that lucky twice. So, yeah. My guess right now is Aria. So, right now we have, in my roster, Huni, Spica, Aria, and uh, who did I say was my number one choice? Uh, and Poom. Poom. Then it comes down to your AD carry, guys. And here are our NA slash O's options. Lost. Yon, Array, I guess technically double lift if he were to come back, and Tactical. Now, and then Danny technically, but I, I can't. There's just, there is not a world where I see EG giving up Danny. And if they do, then EG fans need to be irate. They need to be really upset because uh, I think that would be a humongous mistake on their part, to be honest with you. So, I mean, if Danny's available, you grab him, right? I mean, you just do. I mean, he's clearly the next, you know, great NA, you know, player. But I think so is tactical. You know, I mean, we talked about it. We talked about it. Yeah, he's got a tendency to get aggressive when he doesn't necessarily need to be. Um, but I, I think tactical is a very real option for this team. And I think if they are to get tactical, then they can go, you know, with one of those um, international import supports and and go with an import mid still. Um, and he's still young enough, very much so, that I think, you know, he could fit in with this roster just fine. Again, I think if Peter Zhang becomes coach, I can see him getting bought out by TSM if they're going to, TL's going to do this whole thing where they're going to have Jensen play AD carry or whatever. And you and you think that that won't make tactical be like, hey, I'm going back to my original team. I'm going back to a team that's going to be, you know, believe in me. And, you know, I'm going to try to get, you know, TSM's going to have like big rivalry revenge mode on TL if that's the case. Because you know Spica and TSM and tactical if he comes over here and Hooney, they're going to want their revenge on Bjergsen for leaving. Right? Regardless of how okay it was and, and it makes sense for what he wants to do. And Tactical is just going to want to get back at TL on whatever team he goes to because he's going to be pissed that they let him go. 
you know, when they, you know, put so much time up into Alfari after last year, they put time into him and look at the plays that he made. I'm just saying, I, I, I think he gets a bad rap uh, as much as I do give him crap myself for some of the plays that he makes because uh, he can be erratic. I think he would be a very good member of TSM. I think loss is gone. There's almost no chance that they'd bring him in unless if they really, really felt like he had another big step left to make. Um, and that they saw he was already making it while he, you know, or over this off season. And so, if that's the case, you know, I think Yon and Array are are fine options. I don't real. I will see how Array does at scouting grounds. He's gonna be there, so we're gonna get a real good, real good look at him. Um, I'll be interested to see him. But if they're gonna leave it open to import, which I th- think they probably will there are some very interesting options out there for us viper is one i talked about that one before i think viper could be a very very intriguing option uh considering he will like sword art the year before be coming from a likely runner-up at worlds do i think that one's going to happen almost certainly not but deft is also available don't want him don't want him unless if for some reason they go, we're going Hanwa Life's best players. We are Hanwa TSM, <laughs> Huni Spika, Chovi, Deft, and Poom. Oh, man, that sounds like an intriguing roster, but one that would definitely not be developmental and one that definitely would not be... They It would be questionable as to whether or not they would be able to make that roster work. Because Deft's on a little bit on the old side. And while Chovy would be great, I'm sure with Spika and Huni, uh, I don't know that the bot lane would be particularly good. So we'll see. Um, Doc Dom is apparently available. I don't know about that one, honestly. Patrick, I think if you run out of options, Patrick's fine. I don't have a problem with him. I think he's good. But, you know, whatever. Um... I'm going to save that one for later. Comp, Crown Shot. It looks like Crown Shot might be getting pushed out. I don't know, though. If the whole Alfari and Perks thing to Vitality is real, then it's Alfari, self-made Perks. They could keep Crown Shot, and then maybe they keep Lebrov. I don't know. Um, apparently, G2 really like Lebrov. I think Lebrov's pretty good, but I don't know. He could be, I guess, available. I think the Reckless Train is gone, by the way. I think that... Uh, as soon as TS, as soon as Bjergsen was gone, I think Reckless left with him. Um, depending on what happens with Fnatic, I wouldn't be surprised to see Reckless go back, to be honest with you. But we'll have to see on that one. Uh, and my personal favorite, well, I, I'll do the other ones too. Huang Fong and Doggo. I could see Doggo. He is very young. That is a developmental player for sure. Um, and he's been to Worlds twice in a row. Oh, man. What if they did Jojo Pion, Doggo, and your son? They could do that. That could work. You heard it here first. Huni, Spika, Jojo, Doggo, your son. I wouldn't hate that roster. I think Doggo's a little overrated. But... That's just in terms of him being, you know, one of the five best AD carries at Worlds. I think in the LCS, he'd probably be number two. (laughs) I'd have to really think about it, but he might be number one in the LCS if he were to come here. I don't know. PSG really got uh, exposed in groups this year in a pretty major way. That was not a very hard group for them, necessarily. They they definitely probably should have made it out of that group. Um, but there are two options that I think are pretty legitimate options here. Uh, the first one, I think the one that everybody's going to talk about most, is Karzy. Karzy is available, from, from what it sounds like. <clears throat> and he seems like somebody who would love to come to TSM. 
and get away from the LEC considering all the crap that happened with Mad Lions and their part owner or whatever he was talking trash about him. Carzy was not the problem for that team, by the way. As much as I love Humanoid, I think Humanoid was a pretty major problem on that team. I mean, he played very well. He has a lot of talent, but that guy died so freaking much. He got caught in sign lane after sign lane after sign lane. He would all ten as, as TF get one gold card out and then die. I love the aggression from him. I think he's a very, very good player. I had him in my top 30. I think he probably could have gone a little bit higher at Worlds. I just, there's a little bit of int in him, and it scares me sometimes. I would still love him on this team, by the way, if he did come over. But I think that Karzi is a very good player. I think he is basically the LEC's tactical, but a lot better. I think he's going to be looking to move teams. And I think TSM should be one of the teams to jump on him. If I'm TSM, you want to go a young developmental roster without having to hit a bunch of rookies in your roster. You grab that boy. You grab Jojo Pion, and you grab whatever the heck you can at, at uh, support. And I think that's a good team. I think that's a really good team. And if they're not great right away in year one, they will be great the next year. It wouldn't surprise me, by the way, to see TSM sign a young, upcoming, not tenacity named top laner an Academy this year to maybe bring up for Huni the next year. Just saying. And I think they would use an international slot to do it. I think they would grab the best young top laner that they can and try to develop him. Um, so, yeah, so those are my predictions, guys. They're all over the place because we don't know. We don't know right now. But we will know soon. And and it's and it's it's our job to just continue to talk about to figure out who are we gonna get. And that leads me into my last segment. Let's talk about the front office moving forward. As you can see in this picture and through most of the video. Um Reggie and Parth are very uh, almost distraught about Bjergsen moving forward. And clearly they had to make this video before anybody else could get to it. Um, I had not heard from a single person that Bjergsen was actually leaving up until he did. Not one. Um, I had heard, well, that's not true. I had heard it was 50 50. Right? I heard it was 50-50 at one point, and then I was told again that it was 99% true that he was coming back. Um, it seems like they kept this one pretty close to the vest. Uh, I don't think any of us knew that things were happening for as long as they did. It took us a long time. But the one thing I have been hearing from one source in particular is that a lot of the reason that some of this stuff didn't happen, that they weren't able to build the perfect roster that Bjergsen wanted was because people didn't want to come play for TSM. And that's a hard one to hear for a lot of us, guys. I mean, I, I see everybody on Reddit, everybody in Talking TSM Discord, everybody on Twitter, right? We're all like, well, TSM can get whoever they want. They're TSM. They can buy out Danny. They can buy out JoJo Pion too if they wanted to. They're TSM. So the other teams are just going to submit to their will. And they're going to get to do what they want. This is a wake-up call here, family. You know what? I'm switching this one over too. This is a wake-up call, my TSM friends and family. We are not the do-whatever-the-hell-we-want-to organization anymore. The LCS has come to play. Evil Geniuses are going to be tough next year. 100 Thieves are going to be tough next year. Team Liquid are obviously going to be tough next year. C9 are going to figure it out, and they will be tough next year. Golden Guardians are finding young players. They're starting to build it out. They're going to be figuring it out. Immortals might be a little tougher than we thought next year. CLG are apparently in the running for a lot of top players. They're changing things around. They're going to be tough next year. These teams are not going to submit to the will of TSM for money. They can get it now. 
Dignitas signed a deal with another smaller FTX type company. They've got money. Everybody has money in the LCS, guys. Teams want to go to a players want to go to a team that are going to value them, that are going to take care of them, that are going to do a good job with them. Now we heard from Cody Sun, he felt like he was treated very fairly and well. So that's good. And I'm sure the coaching staff did that. But the front office they have some stuff they got to figure out. Now, everybody's defending Parth. I don't think this is a Parth problem either, by the way. I think Parth is doing a pretty good job considering they have to understand that while I wanted them to restart last year, I wanted them to do the full rookie type roster with Spica and to build this thing out and build a winner for years to come. They finally talked about it in this video, in, in this video that I just showed. Transition back over here. In this video, they talked about they want to have success for years to come. They could throw money at everybody, and, and, and it just – I think it's a partial cover-up. I don't think they can get anybody who they want to. I think the – from what it sounds like, the Kabe situation is going to be a major problem for this roster for years to come. The Kabe and the Dardock situation. And – as much as people are going to probably flame me a little bit on this one, I think the reasoning for that is Lena. And before I go on any Lena-based tirade, I want it to be very clear. I think Lena has done incredible things in this industry. I respect the hell out of her and what she has done for TSM and what she has brought to this organization as a whole. I think she's been a very big driving force in being able to create the TSM brand as we know it. But I just think that she is too closely tied to too many aspects of this company. And it has hurt her, from what I've heard, in pretty bad ways not her personally but hurt her reputation obviously she dated i'm pretty sure this is correct she dated reggie first they worked together they helped to build out this company together and then they broke up and she started dating double lift while he was a player on the team after he came over from team liquid and while i fully believe that that in his mind double lift thinks he came over purely because he wanted to come back to the best team and be a part of TSM again. And I think that's mostly true. There's a part of me that can't help but think that Lena had a pretty big influence in it. And there's just such a double standard that was set. And it's sad for her. And it's sad for anybody who's dating in the workplace. But you're not supposed to date in the workplace for a reason. And when he was on another team, it wasn't as big of a deal, right? Now that he's on no team, it's obviously not a big deal at all. But when she revealed the Dardock things, I think that hurt. And then apparently the Kabe situation was a complete cluster. Apparently TSM did not handle that very well. Which is, I think, why they're handling this situation with PoE just a little bit differently. And if you go and you look on her Twitter... There's like nothing TSM like it used to be, right? There's no president of TSM. There's no co-owner. I don't think there's a co-owner. Sorry, I don't want to give false facts here. One second. I'm going to look this up. Make sure that I am correct on this one. There is. So here's her profile now. It's some anime character that I can't recognize right off the bat at the top. It's a picture of her. Forbes 30 under 30. I eat food and play games. Instagram, Lena Zhu. Twitch, TSM underscore Lena. That is it. That is the only mention of TSM is her Twitch. That's it. If I remember correctly, you used to say president or GM or whatever. I forget exactly. I think it was president. Her title was of TSM. From what I have been told, she messed up big. And a couple weeks ago, she 
seemingly was moved to a different position within the company. I don't know what she did. I don't know if it's fallout still from the double lift stuff. I don't know if it's fallout from the Kabe stuff or the Dardock stuff. 2020 was not a good year for Lena. And from what I am being told, it's not just her, but the front office of TSM as a whole are feeling the effects of years of just assuming that they were TSM and they could do whatever they wanted to. And so now we have to figure out what is coming next for this team. I think there's going to be a lot of turnover. I think there's going to be a lot of position changes. I think there are going to be a lot of new things announced. And apparently, by the way, Reggie stated that not, that FTX money, since they can't put it on the jersey for the LCS, they can't use a lot of that money for the LCS. It's more about building out all their other stuff, which sucks. Because the LCS is essentially blocking them after they didn't block quantum pay whatever you know dignitas feels strange feels like the lcs maybe got burned by ftx or something because ftx is in bed by the way with mlb major, major league baseball now too they're a major sponsor so ftx are clearly doing a lot of things but regardless of all of that i think we are about to have the most impactful, interesting next couple weeks of TSM content possible. I'm not going to be able to make a video for every single one of them. I'm just, I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to probably still stick to Monday videos unless if something really big, like Bjergsen changes his mind and decides to come back. They sign somebody like Chovy or Showmaker somehow. <laughs> like, you know, if they bring in like, the biggest of big names, or they do the humanoid and Carzy signing, then maybe I will do a second video this week or next week for that. But until then, it's just going to be mostly writing and, and tweets. So as I close this show out, because we've been going on for an hour now, I do want to say, you know, that you really should follow all this because I'm going to be trying to do everything I can to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on. And regardless of the... I keep saying regardless. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going to happen with the front office situation. I don't know what's going to happen with Lena. I don't know what's going to happen with this roster. The only thing we know is that Huni and Spica will be there. So at least we get a little bit of reprieve of it, of Spica still being there. And we can take that to the bank and... Hope that they don't change their mind or that he doesn't change his mind. <sighs> it has been quite a last four days. I believe that's 96 hours. Yeah. All right. If you like this show, please take a second to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, hit that bell icon so you don't miss another episode of Talking TSM. I want to continue to make this one of the number one podcasts in all the podcasting lands. Um, at least for TSM, hopefully for the LCS even. So please share with your friends, tell them to download, tell them to leave a review. I'd appreciate that immensely. You know, please share this with your friends in general. Um, you know, you can find me on Twitter at TGH Robert Haynes. You can find the game house at TGH Esports. We will have content out there all the time as signings become more official, as rumors become a lot more uh, concrete, things will be coming out. Um, I will be putting out more information as I get it. Um, I heard the, the craziest rumor recently about uh, this potential TL team that includes at least one player from a team that is going to be in the finals. I don't know. That one seems pretty out there, but hey, so does everything this offseason, so who knows? Um, lastly, make sure you head to thegamehouse.com, guys. Seriously, written articles are going to be coming out about the LCS stuff constantly starting this week and all throughout the next couple weeks. So if you want to keep, keep up, up to date on different news and different things happening, we got you covered. Go. With that, thanks for tuning in. The show comes out every Monday, and it's exclusively for your TSM ear holes. I'm Robert Haynes, and this has been Talking TSM. See you all next week.